Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Now, I hope you enjoyed our Computex coverage. We're absolutely thrilled to have gone past 10,000 subscribers while we're out there. Uh, and obviously this means we are now YouTube millionaires and we have invested that money wisely in a new studio. Now this is gonna allow us to bring you a lot more hardware content. It's something we've been trying to build up over time, but uh, now that should really start accelerating. And to be honest, we did it quite good timing because uh, you know we had a lot of stuff to be getting on with. But uh, NVIDIA decided to call us and bring forward the launch of its RTX 2070 and RTX 2060 super cards by a week. So cheers for that. So we were right in the middle of upgrading our GPU test system when we got the call from NVIDIA about this launch. Uh, so we've got a lot to be getting on with, so uh, forgive us if it's a little bit rushed, but there is a lot to do. But I do want to just take a quick moment to talk about what we've got in the new system. We've moved over to a 9900K, so this is up from the 8700K before. So we've got two more cores to play with. My pride did take a little bit of a hit with this system because I couldn't get the new chip to five gigahertz like the old one. It's now running at 4.9, but we're, I mean, we're pumping voltage for it like anything. There's just, I just couldn't do it within the time taken. But 4.9 is plenty of headroom for, for GPUs. It's gonna be fine. And we've got two more cores to play with, which is the important thing. Uh, it's also got 32 gigabytes of DDR4, a one terabyte NVMe SSD, a 280 mil cooler on it and in terms of cooling all the fans are of course running at fixed speeds so that the thermals when we're testing the GPUs are consistent. You'll find all the details on this system on the website and uh, I'm now going to put it back on the bench because we actually have a load of stuff to be getting on with and then we'll talk about the new cards. So here they are, the stars of the show. But before we go anywhere, let's, uh, let's get this out of the way first. That felt good. So actually, NVIDIA is announcing today three cards, but the 2080 Super will not come in until later in July. So we have the 2060 and 2070 Super. Now, the three cards as a whole are going to sort of shake up the, the middle of the 20 series stack. So at the bottom is still going to be 2060, and at the top you'll still have 2080 Ti, but then it will be 2060 Super, 70 Super, and 80 Super, kind of hitting these new price performance areas. So the 2060 Super, we'll start with that. Now, this is built using the same GPU as the 2060 and the 2070. It's called TU106. And it just has a new configuration. So it's not an overclocked 2060. It is actually a new configuration. And interestingly, it's, it's almost a 2070. I mean, apart from like two SM units, which affects the, the, the main cores of the card, it's, it's a 2070, so it's, it's a way of NVIDIA, I reckon, just using uh, different yields that they couldn't quite get to 2070 levels. This allows them to make a new product, bring it to market at a new price point. So you can see by looking at the specs, as I said, there are, there are two fewer SM units compared to a 2070, or four more compared to a 2060. And this has a knock-on effect on the CUDA cores, the tensor cores, the RT cores, and the texture units. Now in terms of memory and ROPs, this is all 2070. So you've got 64 ROPs, you've got the full L2 cache, and you have uh, eight gigabytes of GDDR6 running at 14 gigabits per second. It also has the same TDP as 2070. So I mean, really, it, it's gonna be very close. NVIDIA's own figures reckon it's about 1% away from a 2070 at 1440p. So very, very close. And in terms of pricing, we do know at the time of filming, it's gonna be about $399. We don't know at the time what that's going to be in pounds, so that will come at the end of the video. But that puts it $20 above the Radeon RX 5700 that's coming out, the Navi card, later this week. So it'd be interesting to see on Sunday how those two compare against each other. But this is definitely a preemptive strike from NVIDIA, trying to get in a new performance, take away some headlines, and, and you know, see what, see what the new RTX 2060 can do. Uh, moving on to the RTX 2070 Super. Now, this is going to come in at 499, and in terms of specifications, this is really a lot more in between the two cards that it comes in between. So it's a lot more in between 2070 and 2080 in terms of core counts and the like. But despite the name, it is not actually built on the same GPU as 2070. It's actually a cut-down version of TU104, which is found in the 2080. So if we're looking at core counts, the SM count has gone up from 36 to 40, which is about 11%. And that means, again, an 11% increase in tensor cores, RT cores, CUDA cores, and texture units. So, you know, throughput's up by about 11%. But also NVIDIA has upped the clock speed by about 10%, looking at the boost. So it should be a pretty substantial increase on 2070 as well, but it, it will not be quite at 2080 levels. And again, like this one, it's going to be priced higher than the competing Navi card. So we know that the uh, 5700 XT is going to come in at 449, whereas this one's going to be 499. 
So Nvidia definitely doing some strategic pricing there, looking to you know target certain gaps in the market, and it'll be interesting to see how much pressure they end up putting on AMD's cards. Now we have a lot more information in terms of uh, the specifications on the website, so if you want a bit more detailed, you can look at that. But we'll move on to looking at how they look physically. We're not going to spend too much time on this because, to be honest, they're just the same Founders Edition designs as we've seen before. So the 2060 one, this is based on the 2060 and 2070 Founders Edition design from before. You know, it's a dual fan cooler. This is not a vapor chamber. This is a, a regular heatsink, albeit a very compact and very difficult to disassemble cooler. Display outputs, we've got uh, two display ports, one HDMI and a DVI, as well as the USB-C virtual link. Uh, and it's an eight pin power input on this side of the card. Over on the back, it's a very seamless backplate. I've always liked this design. I think it's quite nice. Uh, there's no NV link on this one, so no dual GPU. Build quality is exceptionally good. You know, the Founders Edition cards are, are really good in that regard. The, the aluminium works well. It's held together. It's very solid. I'm not a fan of this green super thing they've got going on. Personally, I think that just kind of ruins the whole like tone neutral look. I know they have green lighting, but you can disable it, but you can't get rid of that easily anyway. And it's pretty much the same story for the 2070 Super. Now this is based on the larger Founders Edition design found on the 2080, for example. And it's exactly the same cooler, exactly the same PCB. Everything's carried over. Again, we have the green branding, not ideal. Slightly different display configuration compared to 2060 Super. We've got three display ports, one HDMI, and the USB-C, no DVI on this one. Over on the back, again, really nice back plate. And they do have NVLink on this, so you can do dual GPU. And one thing I really like is that they put a little cover on it. So for most people that aren't using dual GPU, you can just do that. Power connectors on this one are in the more regular location. We've got six pin and eight pin. And once again, you know, it's a very, very well built card. I don't think anyone can really knock Nvidia on build quality. Now we don't have time to disassemble the cards. We really need to get on with the testing, as I said, but we do know from speaking with Nvidia that uh, the cards are using the same board design as before, which means we've got 6 plus 2 power phases on this one and 8 plus 2 on this one here. Uh, we also know that NVIDIA has stopped doing its binned GPU, so it will be the same GPU in this card as in stock cards and in partner cards. Now on that note, while NVIDIA has brought the review NDA for these cards forward to now, uh, the, the actual launch still won't happen until July 9th, and that's also when you can expect to see all the cards, so that includes partners, all the different varieties, and we'll hope to get some reviews out for you then as well. Cool, right, enough preamble. I'm gonna go test all these cards and we'll be back in a minute with all the benchmark results. All right, we're back. Now, if you're in the UK, I hope you enjoyed the weather over the weekend. It certainly looked nice. Anyway, we'll dive in. Um, so as before, we are handpicking the sort of best examples for this, but if you wanna look at all the graphs, you can go to the website. We're not gonna go through all of them because it would just be too tedious, but we'll start going resolution by resolution. So at 1080p, uh, both cars are just excellent. There's no, there's no really other way to say it. Uh, you know, even the 99th percentile frame rates, these are well over 60 FPS for most titles. Um, you're gonna get a very smooth experience. It'll be a great pairing with a high refresh rate monitor. But I reckon it's 1440p that is gonna be the sweet spot uh, for both of these cards. Now obviously the 2070 Super is gonna get you more performance, uh, about 17.5% at this resolution in our testing. But both of them are really good at this resolution. Uh, so we saw 50 to 95 FPS on average for the 2060 Super, and the 2071 was hitting uh, over 60 FPS average consistently at this resolution. Now 4K, both cards start to struggle. Uh, so it's gonna depend on your settings. You might have to turn them down, but you know, in some games it can do it, but others such as Total War, Three Kingdoms, you're looking at sub 25 FPS on the minimum, which you know, is just not really good enough for a, a proper PC gaming experience. So looking at comparisons between NVIDIA cards, the 2060 Super comes out at around 15% faster overall than the 2060, which is now above. And we do notice the higher memory uh, and the higher memory bandwidth come into play because as you scale up the resolution, the advantage of the 2060 Super gets greater, which shows that that memory and bandwidth is being used. So for example, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see at 4K around a 16% lead, whereas at 1080p it's only 10%. So you, you need to kind of get the resolution up to really get the benefit of this new card. Now, compared to a 2070, there's pretty much no difference. We, we actually saw on average less than 0.5% difference between the two. So this really is just a, it's, a, it's, it's 2070 performance. It's not a 2070, but it, it is that level of performance just brought down to a new price level. 
And you can see that in a graph, for example, of Division 2 at 1440p, the two cards are really just neck and neck. Moving on to the 2070 Super. Now, this is about 17% ahead overall than the 2060 Super. Uh, and it's actually a lot closer to the 2080 Founders Edition than we expected. 2080 Founders Edition is actually an overclocked 2080, so you need to bear that in mind. But even that card is only now 6% ahead of 2070 Super in our games. And what this means, uh, that's quite a small deficit. So that means you can make that up with overclocking, as we'll get to later. And it should also mean that some of the partner cards of this GPU are actually going to be faster than some of the stock 2080s out there. So as an example of that, if you look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, you, you're getting 65 FPS on average on the 2080 and 61 FPS on 2070 Super. So, you know, not much in it. Experientially, they're going to be pretty similar. It's not quite 2080 level, but it is very close. Now, versus the AMD hardware that we're actually allowed to test at the moment, uh, compared to Vega 64, the 2060 Super came out around 8% ahead overall. Now, this is not a very consistent average because uh, we're comparing different architectures, so the, the comparison depends very much on the game. But what we can say is that in nearly all of our games, it's the 2060 Super that's winning uh, across DirectX 11 and 12. But in our one Vulcan title, which is World War Z, uh, we see the Vega 64 come out on top. So at 1440p, for example, we're looking at 109 FPS for the AMD card versus 93 FPS on the NVIDIA one, which is a pretty big difference. For 2070 Super, there isn't really a viable AMD comparison card because of the pricing difference. You know, Radeon 7 is like up at 600 pounds at the moment, so not really comparable, but we will compare it anyway. Compared to that card, you're getting very similar performance. The AMD one comes out on top at 4K. The Nvidia one comes out on top overall. There isn't really much in it, and it does depend on the game. But really, to be honest, with the AMD comparisons, just wait until Sunday because that's when we can actually talk about Navi, which are, of course, the much more relevant cards for this review. In terms of like temperatures, power, noise, there's really no surprises. Again, we've seen these designs before. They're performing pretty much the same as before, so no surprises. The Founders Edition cards still hold up pretty well on all fronts, uh, and they definitely have the current AMD cards beat. Whether that remains true on Sunday remains to be seen. Now, in terms of overclocking, the 2060 Super, we couldn't actually get the power limit to increase on that card. I don't know if there's like a, a little firmware bug or maybe just something, but we didn't really have time to look into it too much. But we did get 6 to 8% more performance out of it with a 125 megahertz overclock on the core. Uh, 2070 Super did a lot better because we were able to get the power limit up, uh, which really helped. Uh, on that one, we added 175 megahertz to the core. Uh, it was boosting to over 2 gigahertz very consistently. And this was enough of a leap to surpass the 2080. So as I mentioned, there, there's a possibility that some of the higher end 2070 Super Partner cards will actually offer greater than 2080 performance, but again, it remains to be seen. So now that we're a bit closer to the NDA, we do actually have the UK pricing. So $399 has become £379, and that's for the 2060 Super, and $499 for this one has turned into £475. As should hopefully be clear by now, this launch is very much about bringing existing levels of performance down to new lower price points. So we're now getting 2070 performance for almost £100 less, and we're getting something very close to 2080 performance for almost £200 less. I mean, 2080, at the time we're doing this, is still going for 650 quid, uh, and the new card is coming in at 475. And as we've shown, you can actually overclock it to 2080 levels of performance, which is, you know, that's a, that's a really big saving. Now, that's likely to annoy any early adopters that have paid sort of above the odds for this level of performance. It's quite common for that to be the case for early adoption in this segment of the market. But, you know, the, the 2080 one is, is pretty hard to swallow. If, you, if you've just bought one and now you can get it for 200 pound less, I do feel kind of bad for you. But it is what it is. Um, it's, you know, it's very much clearly a sign of comp competitive pressure. You know, this is not a coincidence that this is happening a few days before the Navi launch. So that should be pretty clear. Um, but, you know, the main advice that I can give you is to just wait and see what Navi brings to the table. NVIDIA is doing this to get, get headlines, get ahead of the game, but it's a few days to wait you can, and we can really assess how it all looks. What we are expecting from NVIDIA is that it's going to start pushing the ray tracing message a bit harder. We did a bit of testing. We haven't gone through it in this, but it is on the website uh, in Metro Exodus. But NVIDIA will be pushing that harder. There's been a lot of ray tracing games announced at E3. 
Uh, obviously, they're the only ones that have the acceleration hardware on board. The counterpoint to that is a bit more conjecture, but we do know that both uh, new consoles are going to support ray tracing to some degree or another. Uh, and both of them are based on the Navi architecture. So whether we see some optimizations come through and trickle up to the PC market, you know, that, that's a, an angle to take, but it kind of all remains to be seen. And this is quite some way off now. So we're, we're getting into murky waters. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, Founders Edition, the designs haven't changed, and that's, that's pretty much a good thing, unless you like disassembling your cards, in which case it's a bad thing. But other than that, they are very high quality. They, they do the job very well, and they're going to be hard for the board partners to beat at reference pricing. Uh, so we can recommend them, but I'm still not sure about that green thing that they've got going on. Uh, one final thing I should mention that might influence your purchasing decision is that they will come with a new games bundle. So either of these cards, uh, when you buy one, you'll be eligible for a two codes. One for Wolfenstein Youngbloods, which comes out later in July, and one for the game Control, which is due to come out in August. And both of these are going to feature ray tracing support as well. You know, as I said, NVIDIA is going to be pushing that side of the things pretty hard. So to wrap up, right now, these cards do look pretty good. Uh, but remember, they look good relative to RTX hardware that was already considered very expensive by most people. This price drop is not happening because of NVIDIA's goodwill. It's happening because of Navi. And so really only half the story has been told so far. So we're going to go away and test Navi now, and we'll be back on Sunday to, to finish up this little saga and see where everything stacks up. There might even be other price drops by then, who knows? Uh, we have to wait and see. But in the meantime, if you guys have any feedback for the review, we'd love to hear it. Uh, please head over to the website if you want to check out the full review with even more detail. And other than that, I will see you Sunday. Thanks for joining.